speaking of speaking of words, the, yeah, here's a segue: images and words. <laughs> what are words for? <laughs> I can't say. I can't imitate Dale. Both. I'm liking <laughs> it. No, no. <laughs> You're not the guy with the microphone behind the kit well, as well, you know. <laughs> You're doing the 25th uh, anniversary tour, um, you know, playing I images and words. Images and words, and, yes. Uh, you know, I was I was wondering how. Uh, it, it, I saw that video where you were talking about how you you were debating over a one second of Metro <laughs> Metropolis yep. Part One. Yes, I was. Um, and I kind of want to know, like. Are you, when you were approaching playing the album parts, are you sort of, uh, what's your process behind putting your own take on it or putting your own spin on things? It's a simple process that I have to first learn what Mike played. I have to first do that. Right. And then I have to go through a decision process and a conversion process. Right. First of all, I have to convert it to a kit and choose what I want to play lefty and what I want to play righty. Right. Now, and it's not um, because of, um, just because I want to keep myself balanced and busy, because that's part of it. Right. I play a lot of things. I'll switch them up, lefty one night and righty the next, but some things I can't because of the, the, the tones I need to hit. Right. Like, I need to play right. the ZBT hi-hats, um, and so... Yeah. If I have to play that and I gotta open up the 13 inch hi hats for the psst sounds, well, I have to play righty. Right. But if I need to use the A customs for a thicker psst, well, I need to play lefty. Right. Well, that's, I have to decide those things. So yeah. I go through a process and it's a very simple process. People know the songs, um, his playing uh, works for the songs. I don't wanna play everything because I, I you know, it feels I like to make my own. Yeah. Um, uh, some beats I like, I change stuff. Some beats the band asked me to change. Like we, we'd like a different thing here. Right. Or I always heard this, and I'd like you to try it. I mean, like a part in Dark Eternal Night. Jordan wrote. He said, "Can you?" Right. You know, I had something in mind when we wrote it, or when he wrote it, and he said, "I, I really would kind of like to hear this drum beat." It's like, sure. <laughs> well, I mean, that's been my role in the band. It's like, what do you need? Exactly. What do you want me to play? I mean, you know, I'm not coming in trying to change anything. Look, if I'm going to do any gig, right? Right. A gig. It's a fun word. Yeah. But if I'm going to do a gig, man, yes. I'm going to learn what the people know. I'm going to learn the song. I'm not going to hit the same as anybody. Right. And I'm going to play differently. And I've learned a lot over the years about the actual, I would call, feel of different drummers. But over time now... You know, I, I really dug into this concept, learning Latin music and a lot more swing, because I haven't I haven't played jazz since I was in high school, and I didn't keep my chops, you know. Um, I did sound more square. My triplets were more uh, spot on. But as soon as I it clicked in, I, I got it back and could... I took a jazz gig just to do it. But the feel, like with extreme, um, yeah, like the, the drum fills... And uh, Nuno always pointed this out, and he's right about it. When you listen to live records, the drum fills are always rush. It, it makes you antsy. Uh. It's better to maybe do do boogage, lay it back a little bit. Yeah. 